Now, in Islam, the doctrine of Tawheed is emphasized repeatedly throughout the Quran. There's one God, a unity, and no others uh, beside him. Now, I've watched Shavir debating Christians many, many times on YouTube. and very much enjoyed it. And I've heard Christians quite often come up with philosophical objections to Tawheed. They say it doesn't make sense, it's illogical. And I've heard Shabir answering them. And I have to say, I think Shabir, Shabir answers them perfectly well, and I don't think they're good arguments. So you won't be hearing any arguments from me tonight saying that the doctrine of Tawheed is illogical or incoherent. I don't think it is. So I'm here to present my view of the doctrine of the Trinity. So we're starting with the, the God, the ultimate creator of the universe. And I believe that that God decided to exist in the form of three minds, of three persons. So his own mind divided into three within himself. I believe that the persons in the Trinity have continuity of consciousness with the original God the Father before he divided into three. So their experience would have been of being the, the one God, the unity God, and then of that splitting into the three uh, consciousnesses. With the original God the Father before it divided into three. So their experience would have been of being the, the one God, the unity God, and then of that splitting into the three uh, consciousnesses. As for the, the idea that um, uh, God must have been uh, the Father and then he split up into the, the Son and the, and the Holy Spirit, uh, this means that originally you only had one person and, the, and then he split into three. Well then, I have to ask, uh, Richard, uh, how do you know he won't split into a fourth and fifth eventually? Is there anything in the Bible that actually says three and only three? Well, there was a verse that said that, that there are three that bear record in heaven, but that verse has now been removed, uh, classified as a forgery. 1 John chapter 5, verse number 7. With that verse gone, is there anything that says that there are three and only three? I think you will find none. And with this idea that Richard has, you have now opened up a can of gods. You cannot close it once you have said that God splits like this and divides. This is like, you know, cell division. Uh, how do you stop the cells from uh, dividing? Shabir said, could there be a fourth and fifth person in there? Well, it wouldn't be the Trinity. Uh, within the being of God. Can I rule that out? No. No, God's, God's revealed three. Doesn't say that's all. I've got no reason at all to think there is a fourth or a fifth. But I, I can't rule that out. But I don't think that's a very powerful point against my position. It is interesting then, in all of this, that Richard said, that uh, I think he said that when I spoke about the, uh, he, the, the, the possibility of ruling out a fourth uh, person in the divine Godhead, uh, he said that he could not uh, rule out. Is that what you said, Richard? You could not rule out yes. that possibility? And did you say that constitutes a powerful argument against you? No, I, I said I don't think it constitutes. Oh, okay. We'll see. Yes, yes. A final question Paul has asked for. The Trinity, the, the virgin birth, the immaculate conception, first century misogyny, and now the Trinity? All right. Um, it's, it's entirely um, native to Greek philosophy. It's, um, you have ways of, of thinking of God that are there's God in his absolutely unknowable aspect, and then there's uh, the part of God that's turned in a creative way toward the world, and then there's that part of God through which God is conscious of himself. How do the philosophers know this is what God is like? This is how philosophers do things. Um, I think they make some of it up, but this is, this is part of a particularly a platonic uh, stream of Greco-Roman philosophy. What's radical and what ends up having Christian theology be some of the most creative, imaginative philosophy um, in the fourth century is the way Christianity try makes that idea Trinitarian and then 
takes this concept of a human Jesus, which was never lost in the tradition, despite everything, and, and puts it like a, a radical in the idea of chemistry, you know, uh, put it into the idea of the Trinity. And that's something that's, um, that's new. But I'm sure that... Um, uh, I'm sure that Jesus would have been puzzled by the idea of the Trinity. Uh, my, uh, my basic case in, uh, in my book, How Jesus Became God, and that I presented last night, is as follows. Um, I don't think that Jesus himself called himself God during his public ministry. I personally don't think Jesus imagined he was God. He wasn't God. He was God's prophet.